There are currently 21,910 cryptocurrencies in circulation. In this video, we're going to explain them all, and we're going to do it in less than eight minutes. Start the clock. Here's the problem. The term cryptocurrency is often used to define all blockchain-based digital tokens. This creates confusion, and many newcomers can't make heads or tails of this situation. It's like saying the US dollar, McDonald's reward points, the Mona Lisa, and Apple stock are one and the same. Yes, they all carry a value that can be measured in US dollars, but they are far from being the same. This is also the case with cryptocurrencies. All crypto tokens can be divided into four categories – utility tokens, security tokens, non-fungible tokens, and payment tokens. Think of them like this. Utility tokens are like McDonald's reward points. Security tokens are like Apple stock. Non-fungible tokens are like the Mona Lisa. And payment tokens, you guessed it, are like the US dollar. Utility tokens have value only in their respective ecosystem much like air miles are tied to a specific airline. These tokens can be used to buy products or services from a specific company or in a particular ecosystem, but they do not represent any ownership of that company or ecosystem. Examples would be one inch token that powers the decentralized exchange with the same name and BAT or basic attention token, a reward token for brave browser users. Security tokens, on the other hand, do represent ownership. These tokens are further divided into equity tokens and asset-backed tokens. Equity tokens are similar to traditional stocks and often grant their holders a stake in the company, give them voting rights, and pay dividends. Asset-backed tokens, however, have qualities of gold, oil, or other commodities. But these tokens can also be backed by other real-world assets. Carbon credits, for instance. Examples in this category would be Exodus Token, which represents ownership of Class A shares of Exodus, a Nebraska-based crypto company, and Pax Gold, a gold-backed token. Non-fungible tokens are digital proofs of ownership recorded on a blockchain. Each token has a unique identifier that cannot be copied, substituted, or subdivided. Hence, there's only one token for each asset. Most people associate NFTs with digital pixelating art, but they can represent ownership of virtually anything, digital or otherwise. A piece of music, a movie, a car, you name it. NFTs can also be your college diploma, concert ticket, or gym membership card, but that's a topic for another video. Finally, payment tokens. These are actual cryptocurrencies. Like established fiat currencies, Payment tokens are not considered securities, but a means of payment. That said, not all payment tokens are created equal. They can be further divided into subcategories, and some even into subcategories of subcategories. Here's the simplified overview. First, we have native cryptocurrencies like Ether, which is the native cryptocurrency of the Ethereum blockchain, and Bitcoin, which is the native cryptocurrency of the Bitcoin blockchain. Think of them like the US dollar and the euro, one being the native currency of the United States and the other the European Union. Secondly, we have privacy coins. These cryptocurrencies are designed to protect the privacy of users and transactions. Monero, Dash, Horizon, Beam, and Verge all fall into this category. Then there are the stable coins. As the name suggests, these coins are designed to have a relatively stable price. Stable coins can be further divided into asset-backed stable coins and algorithmic stable coins. Asset-backed stable coins maintain their price typically by being pegged to a fiat currency. The most popular one is Tether, backed by the US dollar one to one. Algorithmic stablecoins, on the other hand, achieve low volatility by having their supply regulated by an algorithm. DAI, FRAX, and Ampleforth are the most widely used algorithmic stablecoins. Last but not least, we have asset-backed cryptocurrencies. This is money backed by real-world assets. 
not to be confused with asset-backed tokens and the recently mentioned asset-backed stablecoins. Here are the key differences. Asset-backed tokens are securities and are taxed as such. Asset-backed stablecoins and asset-backed cryptocurrencies are money. The difference is that one is designed to maintain stable value and the other to grow it. So, in a nutshell, asset-backed tokens are suitable for long-term saving, fiat-backed stablecoins for everyday payments, and asset-backed cryptocurrencies merge the best of both worlds. They're great for both payments and saving up. The video explaining the underlying structure of different asset-backed cryptos and what makes some of them money while others are securities is already in the making, so subscribe and click the little notification bell to know when we publish that video. Asset-backed cryptocurrencies is also the category where Red Curry lands. Red Curry is an acronym for Real Estate Backed Digital Currency. So, it's money backed by real-world assets like office buildings and retail properties. There you have it. All that's left to do now is mention a couple of meme coins, and we've classified all 21,910 cryptocurrencies. So, coins like Shiba Inu, Akira Inu, and Kishu Inu are all inspired by memes, have practically endless supplies, and carry no real value. In total, there are more than 200 meme coins in circulation, and they should be approached like their creators intended, as a joke. Now we're done. This wraps up all 21,910 cryptocurrencies. They all fall into one of these categories, one way or another. We hope this video makes navigating them easier. Here's what you need to remember. The deeper you dive, the blurrier the lines between these categories often get. You find utility tokens with governance properties, meme coins with utility properties, and so on and so forth. You're also likely to find contradicting information. For example, some consider Ether a utility token of the Ethereum ecosystem, while others see it as a native currency of the Ethereum blockchain. It is so because there's a lot of room for interpretation. Crypto is a fast-evolving sector with broad applications, so the lines between different cryptocurrencies are constantly erased, redrawn, and bent to fit the newcomers. How would you draw these lines? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like and share. To dive deeper into cryptocurrencies, subscribe and join the community. Links are in the description. See you next time.